hears and answers all of our prayers. Grace and peace to you from Him who is and who was and who is to come. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God's Word that we want to take a closer look at this morning is the second lesson we heard a few minutes ago found in Romans chapter 8. It's a short lesson. Let's listen to it one more time. Just two verses from chapter 8, verses 26 and 27. St. Paul writes, In the same way, the Spirit Himself helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. This is the word of our Lord. In the name of him who not only encourages but commands us to pray to him but also promises to answer our prayers, our Savior Jesus, dear friends, be careful of what you pray for. Because you might just get it. Ever hear that saying or word similar to that? Maybe you found yourself saying it once in a while. Do you think it's true? Do you think God would ever give us something that isn't good for us just because we asked Him? Well, the answer is no. That, that saying is wrong. Uh, Jesus, in the Sermon on the Mount, said, Which of you... If your son asks for bread, would give him a stone, or if he asks for an egg, would give him a snake. If you, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more your Father in heaven will give to those who ask. No, God will not give you things that are bad for you. We don't have to worry about that in our prayers. But there is at least a kernel of truth in that saying, be careful of what you pray for, and that's this we often really don't know what to pray for. When it comes to our prayers, we, all of us, no matter how old we are, no matter how long we've been a Christian, no matter how much wisdom we may think we've gained in our years on earth, we're like kids. We're like little kids. Children who have a very limited perspective and really fail to see the big picture and therefore don't really know what's best for them. You know, kids might think it would be a really good idea to have ice cream for supper every night. What could be wrong with that? Mom and Dad know a little bit better. They know that ice cream for supper every night is going to lead to all kinds of problems. In the same way, in our prayers, maybe we, we ask for things. We, we plead for things that we think, with our narrow vision, would be what's best for us. But God, our Heavenly Father, says, no, that wouldn't be in the long run. wouldn't be best for you or, or for others. But what a struggle. Because we, plain and simple, just plain don't know, at least often don't know, what is God's will, what is best. So that, that, that can be a hindrance in our life of prayer, can't it? What do we pray for? Sometimes, maybe you've found yourself like I have, your, your, your thoughts are so jumbled, you're, 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 they're going in a million directions, you don't even know how to put the words together to pray. Thank God, He helps us. We're continuing our series of sermons this summer where we're looking at St. Paul's letter to the Romans, picking out one word each time, a word that helps us understand more about our Christian faith. The Christian faith, one word at a time, and our word this morning is praying. Praying. You know, the Bible has a lot to say about prayer. Many places in the Bible talk about that subject, give us encouragement, tell us the blessings. But I think what St. Paul speaks of about praying in our lesson this morning is unique. You, you don't really find this particular aspect of prayer in other places in the Bible. And that's this. God, the Holy Spirit, prays for us. The Holy Spirit, um, he, remember, he's, he's the, the third person of the Trinity, the, the, the Godhead who is, if you want to think of it in these terms, who's in charge of faith. He's the one who brings us to faith. St. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians, no one can say Jesus Christ is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. 
He's the one that brought you and me to faith. We didn't make that decision. We didn't make that effort to do it. He did it for us. He did it in us. But, but understand this. When the Holy Spirit brings you to faith, He doesn't just bring you to faith and then walk away and leave you to your own devices. He continues to take up residence in our hearts. Paul also writes, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you. You and I have the Holy Spirit in our hearts, in our bodies. That's pretty amazing. So what's he doing in there? Well, he's doing in there what he did when he brought you to faith. He, he continues to keep you connected to Christ. He strengthens your faith as you hear his word, as you receive his sacrament. But he does one more thing St. Paul reminds us of. He prays. The Spirit himself, St. Paul writes, intercedes with words, with groans that words cannot express. Last week we heard about groaning. We were listening to St. Paul write about the, the problems and troubles that sin has brought into this world that has affected everything in this world and how that sometimes causes groaning. Well, the Holy Spirit isn't groaning because of pain. He, he's rather crying out for mercy for God's people. Maybe that strikes us at first as, oh, you know, kind of interesting, but yeah, a little bit of theological trivia that doesn't really impact me all that much. Not true. Let's think about this for a moment. Let, let's dig a little bit deeper into this Word of God. Let's see how comforting it is to know what St. Paul is telling us about praying, that the Holy Spirit prays for us. Paul points out that we don't know what to pray for. So often, I'll give you an example. Maybe some of you have found yourself in a situation like this. You have the opportunity for a new job, one that maybe pays better, better benefits, or is more in keeping with your training and experience. But it would mean moving away from family and friends and your church. What to do? What to pray for? Do you pray that you get the job? Do you pray that you don't? Or, how about this one? I know many of you have found yourself in this situation. I was in this situation just a few weeks ago. A loved one, we find out, is suffering. In this case, it was my mom, who I learned had been taken to the hospital with pneumonia. So what do you pray for? You pray, you hope, you want your loved one to... to, to to be healed, to, to, to return home again, but then again, you don't want your loved one to suffer. So what do you pray? That, that they would recover? Or that God would take them to heaven? Thank God that he promises the Holy Spirit himself intercedes when we don't know what to pray for. We don't have to worry, I better be careful what to pray for or I may get something that's not good. Not true. The Holy Spirit himself intercedes for us when we don't know what to pray for. He is God. He is God the Holy Spirit. He knows God's will because he's one with the Father. And therefore, we can be certain that only what's best will be laid before the throne of our Heavenly Father. Or how about this? Sometimes it isn't that we don't know what to pray for. Sometimes it's Christians literally, physically, can't pray. Think about it. Millions of Christians can't pray. How about a tiny infant? Born again of water and the Spirit, a child of God, but hasn't reached that stage of development yet where they understand their needs or can express them. How can they make those needs known to God. Sure, their parents pray for them and grandparents and family, but those of you who have had small children, infants, sometimes have found yourself going, I wish I knew what was wrong. They can't tell me. What do I do for them? And then we wonder, how could they pray? How can they ask God to help them? The Holy Spirit, who groans with words with, that words can't express, who brings those needs before the throne of God. Or how about an adult? 
who because of disease or accident or the ravages of, of diseases like Alzheimer's or dementia no longer have the capability of, of thinking and expressing themselves. I think of my grandma Merton, the last years of her life spent in what we would call a persistent vegetative state. She couldn't dress herself, couldn't feed herself, could not communicate in any way. How can she pray? Sure, we prayed for her, but how could she herself pray? And St. Paul says, here's how. The Holy Spirit does it. He intercedes for us when we can't pray, when we don't know what to pray for. What a comfort that is. If you have a loved one in a situation like that, a tiny baby or somebody who their, their mental faculties just aren't there anymore, find comfort in the fact that that person's needs are being brought to the throne of God in prayer through the Holy Spirit. Or find comfort in knowing that if, God forbid, but if we would be the ones who find ourselves in that situation someday, you're not cut off from God. You still have your needs and wants brought to God in prayer, courtesy of God the Holy Spirit. Let me ask you a personal question. How is your prayer life? How much time do you spend each day in prayer? Do you find yourself spending a lot of time regularly before the throne of God? Or, or, or are you one of those Christians who seems to go, go in streaks when something big comes up, when there's a problem or something in, in your life or a life of somebody you know, you, you pray a lot and then other times you kind of go on autopilot? Does, do your prayers mostly consist of the words, Come Lord Jesus, before a meal? Or even if you find yourself praying, regularly praying for others, for yourself, none of us could say that our prayers are as much, that we pray as much as we ought to or should or can. So why is that? Why don't we pray more? I think sometimes people will give the reason, well, I don't have time. We just don't have time to pray. But, but somehow we seem to have time for watching TV, updating our Facebook, going to the gym, or a million other things that we don't have to do, but we certainly make time to do. So I don't think it's a lack of time that hinders our prayer life. I think in many cases for us, it's a lack of confidence. You know, does, is God really listening? How do I know He is? Or maybe we, we look at ourselves and we say, why would God listen to someone like me, some sinner like me who, who, who so often messes up. Why in the world should I expect him to care about my trivial needs when you look at the needs of others in the world around us? But once again, God the Holy Spirit comes to our rescue. He gives us confidence in our prayer life. We are guaranteed that God hears and answers our prayers. St. Saint, Saint Paul writes at the last verse of our reading this morning, He who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. You can be absolutely sure your prayers are heard and answered by your Heavenly Father because it is God the Holy Spirit who is bringing those prayers to his throne. So often our prayers are, are weak, intermittent, stumbling, but they are heard, every one of them, rest assured. Now that's not a license for us to become lazy in our prayer life just because the Holy Spirit's praying for us and I can go on you know, cruise control. Not at all. Rather, it's encouragement to pray all the more, all the more frequently, all the harder. Because you know your prayers are being answered, every one of them. The Holy Spirit's got us covered. When we don't know what to pray for, He's got you covered. When we can't pray, He's got you covered. 
when we just plain don't pray, He's got you covered. May that word, that one word that we're looking at today, praying, and what God has to say to us today in His word, give you encouragement and strength as together we regularly bring our needs, our wants, our cares, our worries, and our joys to God our Father. He's listening, and He will answer them for your good. Amen.